My name is Ed Conroy. I'm the creator of Retro Ontario. Many, many years ago, I worked in the industry, the television industry here in Toronto, and turn of the millennium realized that there was no uh, archiving going on at the station I worked at. And so I started to collect as much as I could uh, everything from, you know, tapes that were from the station to, you know, people's home recorded uh, VHS tapes that I used to be able to find at yard sales and thrift stores. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with all this stuff, but I knew it was important to try and keep it uh, from, from being lost forever. Uh, and then in 2005, this incredible website called YouTube uh, arrived and suddenly it made sense. Okay, I can, I can start to digitize this material, put it on YouTube. And really that kind of stuff, I think it shows you more about a culture, you know, than anything else. Uh, the Museum of Toronto approached me and said, look, we'd love to do something with you about children's television. And I thought I knew a lot, but doing this exhibit, putting this exhibit together, it blew my mind, really. I found out about all kinds of stuff that I didn't know about. You know, I used to think that the, the 70s was the decade of innovation in Toronto television. I think I learned quite quickly that it was the 50s uh, at the at the CBC, you know, the boring old CBC was really on the vanguard, uh, especially when it came to children's television. And I think it was because at that time, television was so new uh, as a form of communication that it was it was really looked down upon. Anybody in the entertainment industry wanted to be in film or in radio or in theater. They saw television as just a fad. Children's television was, was even more looked down upon as just kind of a you know place where losers went. What it did create was this environment where there was just a lot of rebels and a lot of people that had nothing to lose and a guy like Dr. Fred Rainsbury, absolutely incredible forward-thinking guy. Nobody you know nobody knows who he is. Uh, but he he brought Mr. Dress up here, he brought Mr. Rogers here, he workshopped what we now know as Mr. Rogers neighborhood. He did all that in Toronto. So I think it was an opportunity to, to sort of talk about some of these lesser known people and their contribution. And what's amazing is, you know, everybody knows these shows. A lot of people in America think today's special, you know, is an American show, unfortunately. So I just love that idea that this group, this Molly crew of people in Toronto were making these shows with no money and no real support. And they resonated with people not only across Canada, but across North America, across the world. It's kind of ridiculous that Toronto doesn't have a dedicated museum for all of these things. I mean, we talk a lot about the culture of Toronto and, and there's so many amazing stories. And I love that the museum are all about doing it and kind of doing it on their own. And they saw value in this piece of children's television, not just because, oh, you know, it's great to be nostalgic and it's it's, it's a wonderful feeling to, to walk into the doors of 401 Richmond and see Elmer the Elephant or the Polka Dot Door. And I love that stuff too, but I think it's more about getting a sense of where we've been and where we are and where we want to go. We take it for granted now that it just this is the way it is, but you realize these people were fighting against insurmountable odds to get people of color on those shows. And a lot of it started through children's television. It was like, that was like the Trojan horse to break through the doors and change the way that the, the industry looked at stuff like that. Canada gets kind of a bad rap about movies. There's always, a you know, this idea that all oh, Canadian movies are poor, watered down uh, versions of American movies. That may or may not be true, but Canadian television has done stuff, genres like children's or in news broadcast or in comedy, things that are light years ahead of their time. That is starting to get its due, thanks in part to obviously Canadians that have gone on to become very successful um, and sort of infiltrated Hollywood. But there's a lot more discussion about, say, a guy like John Candy. I'd say there's more appreciation of his work now than there ever was when he was alive. And he got his start in children's television, you know, on TV Ontario. We don't need to be ashamed of this stuff. We should be proud of it and we should be celebrating it.